Now, any further delays in starting an international peace conference in Syria could prove fatal, according to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. This comes as the number of civilian fatalities rises in the war-torn country amid disturbing reports of 450 Kurds being killed by militants in northeastern Syria. Now, the Syrian government is keeping its grip of a larger area in the south of the country. A huge section of the population here belongs to President Assad's uh, Alawite Muslim sect. While the rebels, most of them representing the Sunni majority, are in control of a large chunk of uh, the north of uh, the northern provinces stretching to the Iraqi border to the east. And there are many al-Qaeda-affiliated groups in the ranks of the opposition tucked in the eastern corner. Here's the Syrian Kurdish minority enjoying a large degree of independence. But the enclaves in other areas have become the targets of heavy attacks from al-Qaeda-linked fighters. According to recent disturbing reports, 450 Kurdish civilians were massacred. And a week ago, jihadists captured 200 civilians from two Kurdish villages in Aleppo. Serious Kurds are raising the alarm over ethnic cleansing by groups connected to al-Qaeda. It comes amid reports the militants are about to announce an independent Islamic state in northern Syria. Now, RT correspondent in the region, Irina Galushko, is following developments. 450 people, at least 120 of them children, were killed in cold blood by al-Qaeda affiliated militants. These are reports that we're getting from northeastern Syria, from the Kurdish villages and towns in the region. This is an incident to which uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has alluded and he said that of course this is also another sign that a, a political solution towards the crisis in Syria is absolutely needed as soon as possible. The pressure on Kurds is increasing from uh, the likes of the Al Nusra Front. We know that at least 200 people have been taken hostage again from various villages and towns. And we have spoken to one of the men whose relatives are in one of the villages and were among those who have suffered at hands of the Al Qaeda affiliated groups. The Al Nusra militants and other rebel forces surrounded the village. They started going from door to door, entering every house. If there were any men, they killed them and took women and children hostage. The rebels came into the house of my cousin. He was at home, so they murdered him, took the women and children and blew the house up. The Kurds are very, uh, very uh, protective of the land that they have been living in for literally hundreds of years. This was a territory and Kurds are spread out over this particular area of the region where Syria, Turkey and uh, Iraq sort of meet, come together. And uh, they were actually very successful at pushing the uh, extremist groups out of Syria over the past uh, couple of months, as a matter of fact. And once the extremists realize that they are being essentially pushed out of this region, where uh, coincidentally, they envisioned uh, creating their own state, the Al-Qaeda state. They have uh, uh, multiplied their efforts at uh, essentially trying to reclaim this land, which never really belonged to them, and to sort of punish the Kurds. And that seems to be the way that they're going. This area are surrounded by Al Nusra and uh, uh, these uh, radical groups, and we, nobody from the Kurds are uh, able to, to enter to this region because they are arresting people and kidnapping people. They are using so many accuses against and it's the Kurds that's Kurds. They are atheists at, according to them, and they are not, not real Muslims, and we, we, they, are, uh, uh, they are preventing us to, stay, to establish a state. When I'm talking to opposition uh, members, I'm talking to Syrian coalition members, they, uh, they told me, yeah, but Kurds are trying to independ, and it, is, it wasn't a good idea. That's why Al-Qaeda is attacking. That means he, he confirmed these attacks, and he are using this uh, uh, attack as um, Al-Qaeda as umbrella to attack Kurds. So it does look at this point like the situation in northeastern Syria with Kurds and the likes of the Al Nusra Front seems to be spiraling out of control and of course we'll be keeping a very close eye on it as it develops. The Free Syrian Army insists it's only targeting specific Kurdish political parties, but the ethnic group says there's a wide-scale war against them. But there's likely to be international silence to the allegation of Kurdish genocide, according to German journalist Manuel Ochsenreiter, who's closely followed the Syrian conflict. 
I don't expect any international reaction except uh, an oral protest right now. I don't think so because there are international interests, especially the international, the, the geopolitical interests of Turkey, who is a very important NATO member. We shouldn't forget that NATO troops, also German troops, are now at the Turkish-Syrian border with Patriot rocket systems heading against Syria. So we have Turkey on this side, and as long as Turkey plays this important role in this conflict, I don't think that there will be any serious international reaction. A former Al-Qaeda member stated that the leader of the Nusra Front is working or working close with the CIA, and we have other information from the Kurdish Popular Defense Units who claim that the Nusra Front is also organized and supported by the Turkish intelligence. And I think this is not a coincidence when we know how the Kurds are treated in Turkey itself.